In previous video, we created AWS budget. We can monitor our spending using those budgets, etc. But what I wanted to notice is we are still logged on as a root user. And that root user is not really the one we want to use to create anything like resource-wise, like servers, load balancers, etc. We don't really want to use a root user for that. What we should use instead is some type of admin account, admin user or any other user that, you know, has some limited scope. So in this video, we will create admin IAM user. So the service I need is called IAM. We already saw that when we created MFA authentication, when we were creating the account itself. As you can see, I haven't completed that step, but I hope you did. But what we want now, though, is a new user. If we work for an organization, we don't usually create one. We create many and we put them in some kind of groups of users. So maybe let's start from groups instead. That's usually the way. But it doesn't really matter. We can start from any point and we'll end up in the same place. But uh, let's, let's, let's start from group. So we create group. So we can create a group of users. And we will call them admins. It will be a group of admins. And every single admin should have similar set of permissions. And uh, those permissions are configured here. And you can see at the very top, administrator access. That's exactly what we need. We tick that and we can see provides full access to AWS services. And that's fine. We need them to access services, but they will have limited access to view any financial information. So we call them admins and we create group of admins. So that's now done, but we can see we have no users within that group. So now we can go to users and we will create a user and place it within that group of admins. So let's just click create user. Let's call it admin, maybe administrator. So slightly different name. And now what we need, we have to tick that provide user access to AWS management console. And you can see it's optional. <laughs> and uh, somebody might think, isn't that the whole idea why we create that user. We want access the AWS console. That's where we are right now, yes? Well, yes, that's true. But uh, every user can have console access or what we call programmatic access. And I will show you in next video what's the difference and how to configure that. But for the time being, we need to access the console or admin user should be able to access the console just as we do right now. So we tick that, provide user access, and then we click, I want to create IAM user. Here we can have auto-generated password or we can have custom password. Custom, I will be able to type it in. Okay, and now users must create a new password at next sign in, recommended. This is handy if you create that account for somebody else. So you created user, let's say, I don't know, Jack, you gave, you gave him a password and then you click that. So when he logs on, he will have to change it on the first login. But because we create this account for ourselves, I would say let's untick it. And we will be able to use just the password we typed in here. And that's it. We can click the next button. Save, uh, maybe no. And now at this stage, we can add the user to the user group we created two minutes ago, as you can see. So let's add him. Next. As you can see, if we didn't have group created yet, we can create one here as well. But because we already have group of admins, we can just go straight to next. And that's it. Here is a little summary. Username is administrator. He or she will have uh, permissions from admin groups and it will be a custom password and it doesn't require the reset on the first login. That's cool. Let's create that user then. And now we have those sign in instructions. We can copy that information or we can download everything as a CSV file. And I will use this option. As you can see, administrator credentials CSV file showed in my downloads. I can use that, but what I really need is that URL. It's pretty handy. Let's copy it, maybe. We still have it in that file as well, but maybe let's copy it here. And now I will log out from here. I'm still logged on as a root user, remember. So we sign out. So we can either log back in here, but this time as an IAM user, and we will need account ID, 12 digits. But remember, I copied that URL. Let me open another tab. Maybe I will show you both ways. I can paste it here. Remember that long URL I just copied? This actually already has that account ID. So one less thing to type. I click 
enter. As you can see, the only difference is I'm already on page where I can log in as I am user. I don't have to choose that. And I also have account ID already placed for me. So now I just want to add administrator, which is the name of the user we just created and the password we created for that user. And now I can sign in. But maybe before I do that, let me just go back to this tab. And as you can see, it's a bit different login page, but it works exactly the same. So the account ID, I can actually copy from here. Might be easiest way. Let's go back. I can paste it here. Put here if I click next. As you can see, we are exactly in the same place. Hope that makes sense. So because I already have that all filled in, let me just sign in from here. Let's close this one. Okay, we are now logged in as an IM user. As you can see, it says administrator at that long account number, finishing with 8888. And you can also see one more difference because you can see access denied in cost and usage. As I said, IM user will have limited visibility to financial information. And that's fine. We will create this user to create services. They don't have to do anything with the finances. So I hope that helps.